where we talk about yarn and our little community here, which I am so blessed by this week. And I've got so many things to show you, and a lot of it is yarn related this time, yay. Um, but before we do, I just want to say thank you so much for praying for our friend Wanda Gordon. I put a little um, notification in our community and over 65 of you posted that you were praying for her. So thank you so much. Um, just briefly, she she lost her son-in-law on Monday due to a motorcycle accident. He was hit from behind very tragically um, and leaves behind, of course, Wanda's daughter and three young children. So. Please keep them in your prayers. This is not something that's going to pass overnight. It's going to be a lifelong change for her family and for Wanda. So thank you so much for praying for her. And thank you, Wanda, for entrusting us with that information so that we could, you know, be a part of, you know, what's going on in your life as well. Um, but anyway, thank you again. I mean, you, you guys are amazing. Just thank you for this community that is, that is here and, and just your, your kindness. Well, let me go ahead and I want to say hey to as many people as I can today. Um, is it Komala was here? Um, thank you so much for joining our, our chat. Thank you for the little heart there. And um, we have Kelly Hart from Tucson and Archer Nace. She says, hi everyone. And thank you so much again, $5. Let me go ahead and add that. So we're up to $10 towards our next song. And I've already got something in mind. So I need to just just get out the old guitar and practice it a little bit more. Um, and okay, so Archer Nace is Terry in Cleveland. She says, expecting storms tonight. Oh dear, yeah, that time of the year. It seems like it's always that time of the year. Um, we have Swati in our chat. Hey, Swati, so glad you could join us. Um, she says, uh, good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss at least part of the live due to work. I hope everyone is doing well. Not a problem here, Spotty. Work is a good thing, is a blessing to have something to do. I know that's what's kept most of us going during this crazy season that we're in. Ah, lots of comments here. Um, Kelly says she's crocheting a beanie for her brother-in-law that I consider as my brother. That is so cool. I've got relatives like that. My, my husband's grandmother, who has been with the Lord for many years now, I think I, I, I claim her as my own as well. Um, wonderful, wonderful woman. I totally get that. Um, we have Dorothy from Charlotte, North Carolina, and Alana from Tennessee, where it's cloudy and rainy. And we have Leon uh, from the UK, uh, from the Isle of Wight in the UK. Uh, she says, lo he said, love, love um, crocheting. I guess love, loving. Let me try this again. <laughs> get my tongue in my in my brain in, in sync here at the same time. It says, um, loving the mystery throw, yay, I'm glad. I hope we're still friends on this one, guys, because I am throwing everything, including the kitchen, well, not exactly the kitchen sink, but I'm throwing everything into this project so that um, those of you who have been kind of afraid of maybe trying these cables that, you know, it's just a square, it's just it's just yarn, and if you don't like the square and you don't like it, just, just wait for the one the next week and just make more of the other ones. and. You know, it's one of those things where it's okay. You can mess up and, and just have fun enjoying, you know, the the, um, the process of learning. That's the goal. But I'm so glad you're enjoying that one, Leanne. We have Charlotte Bruce. Um, she says she's listening and canning potatoes. Wow, I have never done that. I have dug potatoes one time in my life on the farm in South Carolina. But, and that was an experience for this, this I'm not really a city girl, but kind of a suburb girl, I guess. So more power to you, Charlotte. That's great. And um, we have Grace from Northwest Washington State, all the way on the other side of the country. And we have Love to Craft waving at us. And Hannah, yay! My daughter Hannah is moderating for us from good old South Carolina. Thank you so much, Hannah. We can't do this without you, my sweetheart. And... Um, Ah, Love to Craft says it's her birthday. Well, happy birthday. Very many happy birthday blessings to you. I wish you just many, 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 many more. And, and may, may you get lots of yarn today. <laughs> um, we have Melanie Lewis asking about how Grandma's doing. Oh, that is so kind. She says, say hello to me. Um, by the grace of God, I can answer that. She's doing really well. I mean, really, really, really well. So thank you guys for praying for her. She's 92 and going strong. Really, really, really. Um, very wonderful woman. All right. 
Um, we have, oh, thank you, love to craft for the prayers for Wanda. And Wanda, the backwards, wrong side crocheter is in our chat today. And I just had a ton of, um, ah, I just lost my place. Hold on, guys. I, I need someone to hold my hand through this sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. We have Grace wishing a happy birthday to the love to craft. We have Anna from Rhode Island, Rhodes Island, Greece. Wow. Welcome, Anna, all the way from Greece. Well, that's so great. I really hope I get to go there. I really hope I get to go there in 2022, but we'll see. Um, anyway. We have Melanie from Montana, yay, and Vanessa from San Antonio, Texas. We have Cheryl. Um, oh, thank you, Kelly. You're so sweet. I so appreciate your kind encouragement there. We have Harriet Cutter and Edith from Holland. Oh, my goodness. You guys, are so many out there. <laughs> we have Jane. Um, she says hi from Sunny Day and, and Darby. Thank you, Jane. Darby, I was going to say Derby. <laughs> I actually worked with a, with a man named Darby. His last name was Darby, but it was spelled with an A, D-A-R-B-Y. It was Americanized already, but thank you for Americanizing that so that I could say it properly. Um, we have uh, Jane from West Springfield, Massachusetts. Ah, I know where that is. And um, Barbara says, hi from Amster Amsterdam, the Netherlands, working on the Gaithersburg Stole. Yay. Um, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Thank you for, for checking that video out. And um, we have Terry Redman in the chat. Um, she says, winding, ha winding yarn, prayer, all is well with you and your family. Yes, yes. Um, things are going well by the grace of God. And um, we have much, much to be thankful for, Terry. Um, we have Mary Ford McCourt and um, Linda from sunny California. And um, we have Barbara from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and Shay from a cloudy Dallas, Texas. Um, we have Esther from Cary Island, I Ireland. Wow. Um, uh, love Ireland. I mean, I love all you guys. And, you know, I, I just, there's so much of the world I want to see, um, but you never know. Um, we have Dolores. It says, first time I've been able to watch for a while. Looking forward to Monday Square. Yep, I am too, Dolores. Ugh. And um, and Jane says she's lo loves the mystery cables. Yay! And um, Melanie's making Christmas washcloths. Wow. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Kelly says she likes the shawl. Kelly, this is just another variation of the Gaithersburg, the Gaithersburg shawl or scarf. And um, I have I've made these in many different colors, and that's all it is, my friend. I just switch up the yarn on the same old design. And you end up with a brand new shawl that looks totally different. So, and I'm going to be doing some more of those shawls in the future, just to let you know of, of slightly different designs, but where I kind of show you three different ones. I'm working on one now. I'd like to show it to you, but I'm going to hold it back kind of like a Christmas present, you know, just kind of hold it back a while. Um, I, I am working on the second variation of this particular shawl. But then I have a third variation that I'm actually going to film so I'm really looking forward to showing that to you all. Um, let me make sure I got everybody. Okay, okay, I think I'm catching up. I'm kind of jumping around here. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm already getting behind. Um, oh, you guys are so sweet. Wishing Love to Craft a happy birthday. Thank you for spending your birthday here. My goodness. Um, and we have Sylvia from Decatur, Alabama. I think I said that one right. And let's see. Uh, there we go. Try to get this thing to move a little bit. And um, Mary from from uh, from N. Okay, maybe that didn't type in well, but but thank you for being with us, Mary. Um, we have Patricia from Rockhampton, Australia. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are doing well. I know you've been on lockdown like forever. I hope they release the shackles soon so that you guys can get out. I noticed that they let you to do outdoor socially distance recreation, whatever that means. I, I, I watch a guy, I, I told you about him before, he's really fun. 
Stefan Drury from Australia. He he flies a a single engine Cirrus airplane that interests our family quite a bit and he's just just a really nice guy and takes us all over Australia in his plane so we kind of feel like I feel like I've flown with him you know in my mind uh, many times over your beautiful land and um, I hope they I hope they let you out soon and we have uh, Shy KD09 if I'm saying that right from Sydney oh I love Sydney um, love watching your videos and learning new things well thank you so much uh, I'll just say I love visiting Sydney and, and we got to see the Blue Mountains and lots of other things. Um, the Three Sisters and um, oh my goodness, I'm ready to go back. That was uh, 2000, 2018? Yeah, I think that was 2018. So it's been a while. It feels like an eternity ago that I actually got on an airplane, but um, I'm ready to do it again. Uh, thank you for caring for Hannah Terry. We have Cindy from North Carolina. She said, I received your book and card. Oh, you're, you're so welcome, uh, Cindy. Um, and she's going to be working on the Carolina Sun Throw. Well, that reminds me. Do I have one of the oh, leaflets here? Of course I don't, uh, but that's okay. That's okay, just to let you know. Hold on one second. Let me grab one. Uh. Oh, come on. All right, that was the one. that was the one duck that wasn't lined up for today. And here's another one. I forgot to turn this on so I don't look too dead. Um, this is now available. This is my leaflet. Now you've probably seen these these um, designs before if you followed me at all. Um, but there is a throw for every season. It's called Four Seasons of Cable Crochet, and of course, you have the one that's on the title, which is the autumn throw. And we have Bonnie's winter cable throw here. I've had that sitting on my um, my holder here for a long time, but I finally packed it up and changed it up a little bit. We have the spring throw. And in here we have, okay, this is the Carolina sun throw. It's made up of squares. So that's what, um, that's what Cindy was talking about. And, um, it also has two added designs. It has the, the bonbons blanket, which you can make up a, a really of any weight yarn that you would like. I happen to use the good loops, um, yarn, but you can use, you can even just use your scraps on that one in particular. Here's a picture of it being blocked. As you can imagine, if you have all sorts of yarn in your stash, all you need is like a common, uh, either a, a, an antique white or a, you can even use black or, you know, a strong neutral color to put them all together and you've got yourself a blanket. And here's the glazed pecan throw. So there are six of these in a leaflet. They are available from Amazon, $12.95 for the booklet or if you want the PDF. And these do come with video links to the complete video tutorials. All of them except for one is available publicly on my channel. Um, the winter the winter throw is the one that is, is not a public uh, publicly available link, but it is included in the book. There is a Kindle version you can get from Amazon for $9.99. And just to let you know, I am including this in my online Etsy store. Um, as well, so for anybody looking for like a special gift, um, it sounds weird for me to say this, but if you want one with me to autograph it for you, I autograph everything that leaves my Etsy store. I have many other books in there, like um, Cable Crochet Made Easy, um, Contemporary Celtic Crochet, Celtic Cable Crochet. I know they're all very similarly titled books, and a few, and a few others. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, they're available now. Uh, some of the books ship without additional shipping charges. Um, some others have a slight shipping charge just because I have to pay for stamps <laughs> and I have to pay for envelopes and I have to drive to the, to the post office. I'm not an automated service like Amazon. So, and I know you guys understand that, but, but anyway, thank you for, for mentioning that Cindy. So I could show you all, show you all that and let you know that it's available in the Etsy store now. And, um, Let's see, we have Vargas, 
Okay, the person said Vargas Wee Wee. That was interesting. Um, she said, hello there, love your work. Just bought yarn to make the Celtic throw. Plan to do rug also. Well, great. I hope you enjoy that one. Um, and Wanda says, I'm, I'm going to be waving at Becky before the chat is over. Oh, sweet. Are you, are you in Becky's area, Wanda? That's great. <laughs> um, uh, we have LPJ, um, or Linda from Montreal. So love you too, Torres. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Linda. Um, that reminds me of the one time I got to drive to Montreal. Um, wow, back in 1989. It's been a while. Um, and we have Sandra from the UK. Um, Oh, well, so I love to craft says she is 51 today. It's a blessing to reach this age. My mom passed away before she could reach 39. Yes, I'm so sorry to hear about that. But, but yes, 50, you know, I, I told my kids years ago, and I hope they remember it when they get to be older. Hope you remember this, Hannah. Um, I, I jokingly, but somewhat seriously said for me, you know, life didn't begin until I hit 50. I mean, there's something about getting to an age where you're just to the point where you know a lot more. Um, you don't worry as much, um, and you're just not as concerned with what people think anymore. And I think once you get to that point, and I hope you're there, love to craft, um, you know, there's just a freedom that comes with that. And I, I just feel like a lot freer to enjoy the things I want to enjoy without care about what people think. So, yeah, it's, it, it's almost like, you know, a, a major filter kind of comes off, but in a good way. So... Welcome to the 50s. Um, I just just pray you know, for good health and smooth sailing for you. Uh, it's a great age. And uh, let's see. Ah, we have Rosandra 1 from Cold, Colorado. Yeah, I heard about that, Rosandra. I mean, I understand we're getting some of that cold weather coming our way soon. So if you want to keep it on that side of the of the continental divide for a while. I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I do welcome the cold weather because that means we get to wear ponchos. Yay. And um, I've got something to show you. Let me show you my poncho. That's something else to talk about today. I showed this to you a little bit last week. This is the Southwest poncho. And I... I I am a fringe girl. Yes, I'm a fringe girl from the 70s. I've seen those debates online about whether to fringe or not to fringe. Well, I'm a fringe girl. And I've heard people say, oh, the fringe wears out and blah, 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 blah. I've got fringed things that I have worn for years, and I have not had that problem. So I don't know what kind of junky yarn those people are using, but if you use, you know, even just average to, to decent yarn, that fringe is going to be there a long, long time, and this is going to keep me so warm. And I I would put it on right now and wear it through the broadcast, but I will tell you something. I would be sweating by the time it was over because we're at the point where our air conditioning doesn't come on, but the heat's not coming on either. It's just about right. you know. The, and I just don't want, to, don't want to have any extra layers when I don't need it. But that time is coming soon. Well, let me show you. Oh, I also wanted to say that this particular shape, if you can imagine, is very forgiving for many different sizes. It is just going to be one size, okay? Um, I might, I might make, um, I might add some sizing differences for a smaller size, maybe for a, a young, a younger child, or not, not so much a child, but you know, uh, maybe a preteen kind of a sizing, you know, kind of size it down for the extra smalls. But um, this, this will comfortably fit you if you're a medium to, I would say, extra large and maybe even 2X, 3X sizes because, you know, you see all of this on the side, which just ends up being drapey material. If you're on the smaller side, if you're on the larger side, you're still going to have some of that drapiness, okay? So if you're ever wondering why I don't have five different sizes on there for these things, that's why these things, it, it's just like wearing a blanket. Well, let me show you the yarn that I used for it. I did put a link in the video description below. I told you I was going to show you lots of yarn. This is becoming one of my favorite yarns. This is vintage. This is Barocco Vintage. Okay, this is, let me read the, comp, the, the, uh, the content of this. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool. 
and 88% nylon, not 80%, that's good, that's, that's bad math. 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. This is a machine wash inside out in cold water and then in the gentle cycle and then lay flat to dry. Those are the washing instructions. And um, this yarn feels really, really nice. This is the same style of yarn that I used for this sweater here. It's just that I used a thinner, the DK weight yarn for that sweater behind me. And uh, I, I really, uh, anyway, this is a, a bit more expensive than your uh, basement bargain yarn. But I, I think, yeah, I think it's a good investment. It is a worsted weight, but it is a thinner worsted weight. So if you replace, you know, if you use a different yarn, let's say, for example, if you're maybe were 2X, 3X sizes, and you want one slightly larger, I have an, an answer for you what you can do. If you don't want to use the Barocco, and let's say you go to something like a Lovecraft's acrylic or, um, or even Red Heart, you know, worsted weight acrylic, you could upsize your hook one size from what I'm using. In the pattern, I use a size I or 9 or 5.5 0 millimeter crochet hook. If you bump, if you use like I say, a slightly thicker worsted weight, which the more common uh, yarns that you're going to find at Joann's and Michael's and Hobby Lobby and places like that are going to be a tad bit thicker than this. So your gauge will be a little bit bigger. So if you want the poncho to be bigger, then just bump up your hook to a size J and just follow the directions as is. And it will be a larger poncho, I promise you. Okay. Um, and it may be just what you need. So, so check that out. I do have a link in the video description below should you want to check this yarn out. They do carry it in the Lovecraft stores. They have carry this in many um, in many local yarn stores. Usually the Barocco, the Cascade yarns are very popular there. Um, I don't usually, you don't usually find this brand in the big box stores, which is why I provide links for a lot of this. Um, there is a link for the Lovecraft store, they do carry this. And if you don't like these particular colors, no problem. They have a lot. It's a very wide, which means a lot of different colors to choose from. Very, very generous uh, palette for this particular yarn, which is another reason why I like it. Because, you know, sometimes you go to certain types of yarns and you're just limited. Okay, so they have five colors to choose from. Well, that's great if you're doing a solid color, but you know, if you want to add a lot of colors and make it really fun, that, that makes it a little tricky sometimes. All right. So, um, gee, we're moving through this stuff. Yay. Um, let's talk a little bit. Okay. Hannah's sending me a question. Let me check that out. Okay. Um, okay. LPJ would like to, sh would like you to show or recommend a few patterns for shrugs. Okay, um, I do have, hmm, do I have the book handy? Okay, I, do I have one in here? I know, and it's in the other book. Let me, hold on a second. I do have one shrug, and I do have one in here. I have one shrug in the Celtic Cable crochet book, and there is one here. As well, let me find this real quickly. Page forty-eight. Okay, here is a shrug. It's called the Sweet Shrug. Okay, this is. If you can see the cabling across the back there, let me see if I can find another picture. And here's this. Here's another picture. If I can get it. Okay, that is one possibility. Um, I do have another one um, in, let's see, it's in my Celtic Cable book. I don't, I don't have that real handy to, to grab, but um, it's, what was it called? Uh, I forget the name of it, but there is one in the Celtic, Celtic Cable book as well. Um, if you wanted to check those out. And the one that I showed you, the Schweet, S-C-H-W-E-E-T shrug, 
is in my Lovecraft store. There is a video link for my Lovecraft store in the video description below. Um, there's a link there. You can purchase it either through the purchase of the book or through the individual pattern with that particular one. And you might have, there's some better pictures of it, I think, on my Lovecraft store if you want to take a look at that. And that does come with a complete video tutorial. So in case you're wondering about that, it is crocheted as a long tube from side to side. And then the two ends of the tube are kind of squashed where you make the sleeves and then you crochet around, you know, you kind of crochet around the remaining part for the ribbing for the, the outside of the shrug. It's a very simple um, construction. So I think you'll appreciate that. There's very, it's just two seams, which are like this long for the sleeves and that's it. So it's just crocheting a long rectangle, little two seams and then crocheting ribbing. And that is pretty much it. Okay, Joni would like to know if she can use her yarn stash on that poncho. Absolutely, Joni. Um, let me tell you, each color, let me tell you how much. I, I didn't tell you that. Each of these has 218 yards, and I did have quite a bit left over, so I'm estimating um, you probably need around 400 yards of each of the color, each of the, of three of the colors. And then of the main color, I did go into my third hank, so um, you're going to need probably five to 550 yards of the main color. And what I mean by the main color, that is, um, you know, the brown is also one of the colors of the four colors here, but it's also used for the trim uh, around both of the rectangles and the fringe. So that, that cuts into the, you know, it, it takes you past the 400 yards more, more like 500 to 550 yards for that. I do have a little bit of a ball left from the third hank um, of, of that yarn. So it's not, you know, you know, I will, I will put the numbers down in the pattern. It will say 600 yards because that's what I had to purchase. But you know, you're probably going to have about a hundred yards left over on that third, um, that third hank. Okay. But you probably, yeah, if you have, if you have that in your stash, and if you didn't want to do every color, you know, four different colors, if you want to make it 10 different colors, it's totally up to you. It can even be like a scrap poncho um, for sure. Oh, we have uh, Brat's mom in the chat. Hey, um, it's Linda, right? I believe. And um, she says, coming home from the eye doc checkup. Hope I can at least catch the end. <laughs> I hope you can see, Linda. I know when they dilate your eyes. That can be interesting to say the least, especially on the drive home. Oh, Esther says if I ever want to visit. Oh, hold on, it jumped right when I right when I started reading that. It looked like an invitation to Ireland. Ah, I'll get my bags packed right now. Um, if they would let me on the plane. Um, let's see. I'm I'm backing up, guys. I, <clears throat> a lot of comments have come in. Excuse me. Okay, it says, if you ever want to visit Cary, Ireland, you are always welcome, and I can show you all the great sites. That would be amazing, Esther. I would so love to do something like that. Um, you know, I, that would be a fun trip for all of us to get together and just go, uh, because everybody, you know, everybody there speaks my language. They speak English, so I wouldn't have to go through interpreters, and I've already been there, and I just absolutely love it. I know where I want to go back. And there's so much more that I didn't get to see. And, and I would love to visit your beautiful island again. Um, we have Mabel. Yeah, she's saying happy birthday to Love to Craft. You guys are so sweet. And um, Cynthia says she's making the staggered shell baby blanket. Yeah, I hope you enjoy that, Cynthia. That was just a real fun repeat for me. Um, and we have Dorothy. Um, is working on a rug for her living room and loving how it's coming out. Thank you from North Carolina. Oh, golly, that's great, Dorothy. Um, and okay, okay, and the, our, our Australian friend, Shy KDO Nice says, We have just gotten out of lockdown after 15 weeks. Okay, Christy, uh, I guess you guys are ready to just do everything. I that, that was just so hard for us last year. 
Um, cause we couldn't, I couldn't go from state to state. It was really, it was really, I mean, I could, but I couldn't do anything, you know, everything was shut down, but, um, I can't imagine you guys have been going through that so much longer than we have. Um, I hope, I hope vaccines or whatever, whatever, you know, you guys do, you know, I just hope that everybody can get either inoculated or, or, uh, yeah, just, just get to where everybody's safe or, you know, immune to this thing somehow. Um. I'm not trying to start a controversy, guys. I know that, gee, you know, you say you say something medical these days and it's, you know, you get shot at from both sides. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Um, anyway, but I do wish you it just continued help. Um, okay, Dolores wants to know, what's the Australian man's name with the plane? It's um, Stefan Drury. Um I think it's like S-T-E-P-H-A-N-D-R-U-R-Y or something like that. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's just, you know, he's just a regular person who lives in Australia and flies the Cirrus airplane. Um, and he has a daughter and, you know, a young, young family, just, just a nice guy. Um, my son's learning a lot. We're all learning a lot from him since my son is learning to fly and everything. And um, it's just kind of fun to see other people go through the, you know, go through the routine and, and what they have to do. Um, oh, Denise is in the chat. Hey, Denise, thank you for your, your, your prayers for Wanda um, from, from the UK. Wow. Uh, we have Glenda uh, says currently in Virginia. Full-time RVer. Oh, my goodness. So you're going all over the place, Glenda. Good for you. And we have Linda Jones. And um, let's see. We have Cheryl from Texas. Um, Ms. Condor. And uh, Diane from New Jersey. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Barbara says it's snowing there. Whoa. We have Daniela from Ohio. Yay. Um, oh, well, Terry and, and Pana are just talking about learning Korean again. Um, yeah, I was watching. Oh, I have to tell you guys. I, I was so excited this morning. Um, I watched a video of BTS, which is a Korean, it's K-pop, Korean pop uh, band. I mean, they're, these guys are huge. It's amazing. I went online thinking, you know, just wondering about concert tickets. And then I, I saw the prices and decided that maybe in another life, but, but, um, I was going to bless you, Hannah. But when I saw they were over $500, I just said, you know, maybe I'll get you a bike or something. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, um, I watched one of their videos. It's, um, what was it called? Don't need permission to dance or something like that. And guys, they're, they, they're really delightful to watch if, if you ever get a chance to look them up. But um, I was watching that video and these guys are dancing and they have these really cool looking coats, kind of Western style, but they were just loaded down with fringe. And I'm like, oh, you just stole my heart because I love fringe. So if you want to see a bunch of really cute Korean guys dancing around, um, and, and, the, and this particular one is using English. So... Uh, but they do have subtitles there so that you can watch it in case you don't understand what they're saying. But it was just so cute. They're just dancing around with fringe on. And I'm like, yes, yes, show me more fringe, you know. So anyway, um, got real excited about that. Kind of a way to connect with Hannah. And I sent Hannah a text message right away saying that I think I'm in love. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we said, okay, we have another question Hannah sent. Um, Sue Foster is asking, what kind of stitches did you use for the poncho? Okay, great question, Sue. Um, these are almost as easy as it gets. I don't know if I can show you. Okay, we have, you're going to have to just trust me on this. We have like rows that are just, just double crochet, straight up, nothing special, just double crochet, worked all the way across. And then every other row is working a treble, a front post treble, but it is connected two rows down instead of just the next row down. It's connected two rows down, and that's where you get the, you know, the, the elongated cables there. So you're like doing a double crochet, 
and then a front post treble two rows down and then a double crochet front post treble two rows down and then five double crochet and then you just repeat that and that is it it is not complicated at all um, most of the rows in here are just straight up double crochets all the way across and um, hopefully making this a a fun and relaxing experience for you <laughs> Hannah says um, yes tickets are crazy expensive and yes permission to dance is a great song I guess um, but there isn't such a thing as a bad seat at their concerts. Yeah, but you know, the thing that discouraged me, Hannah, I, I thought, oh yeah, we could go to this concert, right? Well, first of all, it's in LA. So it's, um, it would have to mean buying a plane ticket and fly all the way across the country. And, and the, the tickets that are so expensive, but they're in a stadium. So you're not even like that close, you know, to the stage. So that was the, that was the, that was the kicker for me. So I have an idea, you can do what I did with the America concert, you know, if you wait till they're about 70 years old, then the ticket should be a lot less expensive. <laughs> okay, we don't have to wait that long. I probably won't be around for them. But anyway, just a thought, if you wait until they're no longer the absolute what everybody wants to do, then maybe maybe we can get tickets. I don't know. But that, that may not happen for a while. So anyway, it was a thought. If the thought counts, I hope that counts for something. Um, Anyway, um, and Kelly says, I've tried to look for red camouflage yarn for Dwayne's beanie hat, but could not, all I could find was hot pulling yarn. Do you think he would like that color? Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what to tell you about red camouflage. You know what you could do, Kelly? You could look on Etsy or maybe make a trip to your local... Uh, if you have a, a yarn store in your area that has uh, what they call indie dyer yarn, which is um, yarn that's been dyed by an independent local person. Anyway, if you go on Etsy, they have some really interesting yarn that might give the effect of red camouflage. Um, so what a lot of these dyers do, they just, you know, let me, let me show you. Um, let me show you some, actually. I, I was at a store. Okay, this is not camouflage, but I'm going to take one of these apart. I went to, I guess it was last Saturday at the book signing, and um, got to meet a few people there. It wasn't a huge turnout, but we had a wonderful time talking with everybody that came. Uh, but you know, they have indie dye, you know, indie dye yarn, which is just kind of like this. And let me show you what this looks like. It's kind of hard to see if you're shopping for yarn like this. It's like, well, how is this going to crochet up? But you, what you can do is if you ask permission, ask if you can take it out and look at it. This is actually by a company. This, I guess, is technically not in the dye yarn, but you can take it and, and look at it and see how the yarn, you know, varies, you know, varies. And, you know, if they let you do that, then you can just wind it back up like this. Let it twist naturally. never goes back exact but you can do something like this and kind of you know kind of get it back you know to where it was but they do have they they do have a lot of indie dyed yarn out there that that might mimic what you're looking for so I would say look online look on Etsy E-T-S-Y they have a lot of indie dyers there that sell their yarn and um, you might be able to find some, you know, the hand dye stuff. If you're only, if you're only going to make them a hat, you're only going to need like one. This is probably going to be more than what you're going to need. So I, I would check that out, you know, um, if that's the color he really wants. All right. Um, all right. Hand is talking to me about but they're in America for the first concert in over half a year. Yep, yep, I get that, Hannah. Um, they're supposed to be in Maryland in 2020, but that didn't happen. Okay, so we're talking about BTS again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, let's see. Uh, Miss Condor likes the poncho, yay. Um, 
And yes, the video will be coming. Thank you for asking that, Dolores. The video will be coming November 15th. So it's the week after the crochet along concludes. I will be releasing the poncho. And um, I do have some other things to follow for that. But I'm not going to be releasing a ton of stuff in December because I know you guys are going to be busy. But I might have some small things some small last minute things. I, I'll, I'll show that to you as we get closer, but um, some last minute things that you can make real quickly, like like in, you know, in a couple hours and, and stick in the stocking or, or give to a teacher or something like that. Or, you know, a small gift. Um, okay, Charlene Lucas says, would you substitute for, um, was it Schweppes? I have Schweppes Stardust Yarn. I'm allergic to wool. I'm not familiar with the yarn you're asking about, Charlene. Um, but what you could, what you could substitute, if you're talking about, um, I don't know, the poncho, or if you're looking for something to substitute for wool, I would try something like this. This is, um, you know, you can always get a high, um, you can get a you know a high quality acrylic nylon blend. But this, this is alpaca, 100% baby alpaca. As long as the alpaca has not been processed where they process or blend a lot of wool, like if it's just 100% alpaca, you shouldn't be allergic to that because it's a completely different animal. This part of the camelid family. Um, yeah, alpacas are related to camels. Isn't that weird? And, um, and most people who are allergic to have wool allergies it, it's because, uh, I think, of the lanolin, the natural oils that are in the the wool. I don't think they ever truly get that out, but that's a good thing um, if you like wool. But if you're allergic to it, of course, that's a, it's kind of a bummer. Um, but I'm, if, I'm, if I read my yarn book correctly, the alpacas don't have the lanolin in it. It's, it and plus, it's a, a completely different you know class of animal. So... Um, that that might that might might work for you. You can always try cottons, um, and sometimes they have a nice you know acrylic and alpaca blends that kind of um, reduce reduce the um, the cost of it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Hannah. I'm sorry. The autocorrect. Uh, okay. Okay. She was talking about the sheep sheeples or sh sheep. Yeah. S C H E E P J E S Stardust yarn, um, yeah. Autocorrect apparently changed that to to Schweppes. <laughs> um, oh, Autocorrect nailed me to the wall the other day. It was they really really messed up. And my daughter is asking me, "What does that mean?" And I'm like, "That means that they need to leave my words alone when I send a text. <laughs> That's what it means." Autocorrect. Um, okay. Okay, I see the yarn you're talking about now, Charlene. Sorry for the confusion there. Um, yeah, if you're allergic to wool, you're just going to have to go to maybe the higher end acrylics. Now, I, I haven't used this yet, but my friend Lana at So Original sent me home with this. She just gave this. She just stuck this in my bag, and she says, I want you to try this. She says she really likes this this yarn. I, I personally haven't used it yet, but I do want to try it on something small and see if I like it. It's um, Cascade Yarns Anthem. It's 100% acrylic, but um, it's supposed to be very nice. It's it's very soft. It has a very nice softness to it. Um, maybe even a little bit softer than the paint box yarn. I don't know. But, but of course, the feel is not the only